Hi there YouTube and welcome to Tech Cravers. So I've been having the AYN Odin Pro in my possession for just about a month now and I thought I would give you guys my review of this retro gaming console. For those of you that have been following me for the past month, a billion thanks for 500 subscribers by the way, I'm super happy that so many of you want to watch my content. It should come as no surprise that I'm really into the Odin handheld. And even though I haven't played around with that many Android devices with built-in controller support, the only real competitor being the Ambernic RG552, I must say that I'm amazed of how good this thing is and it's arguably the best device that money can buy as for today. But before we jump to any conclusions, let's refresh with some specs so that you know what we're looking at here. As for CPU, the Odin Pro is using the Snapdragon 845, which is a few years old now, but it has a bit overclocked Adreno 630 graphics to compensate for that. It has active cooling, which seems to be working really good, as well as 8GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 128GB of internal storage, at least on my device. You can also choose to swap to a bigger 256GB of internal storage. However, I don't really see the point of doing that, since you can also use up to one terabyte of external storage through the built-in SD card slot. It has built-in dual 1 watt stereo speakers, it's got a 5.98 inch screen at 1920 by 1080 and a 6000 mAh battery and a clean Android 10 ROM without any bloatwares installed. For video output we have HDMI and DisplayPort, for wireless connectivity we get Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi 5 and we also get a USB 3.1 Type-C and a headphone jack. The Odin is built in a solid material and it doesn't feel cheap in any way and I absolutely love the LED details. I've also seen some complaints that the D-pad is a bit wobbly but I like it that way. When I press it it's one of those clicky ones. The thumbsticks are the Nintendo Switch types and they feel great when playing any type of game. And on the back you can see where the active cooling fan is placed and the two extra buttons that you can map to whatever game you need it in. As you can see on my device I have already gotten 4 scratches from when I put away my device, which is a real bummer, so my recommendation is to put it in a case when you're not using it. As for size I'd say it's pretty perfect, although not something I'd carry with me in my pocket, it's just slightly larger than the RG552, but a lot smaller than a Switch or a Wii U gamepad is if someone thought it wasn't. As for software, I've already said it's Android 10 and you can choose to run it in regular Android or in the Odin launcher, which is basically the essentials gathered in one place. And here you can just click the left thumbstick or swipe from the left and you can get this little Odin menu where you can swap between different types of apps and customize it the way that you want it. You can also swipe from the right and there you have a few other settings as well as the temperature of your Odin. Now that you know more of what kind of device this is, it's time to check out some of the gaming performance. I'm gonna skip everything older than Nintendo 64 since it's gonna run all of that absolutely flawless. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. Retro game emulation is of course where the Odin gets to shine. It's obviously gonna play N64 with ease and some of you might even be wondering why I'm even showcasing N64 in this video. But truth is that for many people out there the N64 is one of the absolute most wanted system to bring with you. In all of my N64 tests the Odin outperformed all other handhelds I have been testing so far both in terms of performance but also in comfort since the controller layout is perfect for N64.
PSP performs awesome on the Odin. I'm using the standalone version of the PPSS BP emulator and the truth is that this is the first time ever that I've been able to jump into an emulated PSP game without having to tweak the emulator settings. I'm playing God of War Ghost of Sparta and basically if your device can run this game it can run any PSP game. Now we're starting to reach some really hard to emulate consoles, starting with the PlayStation 2 and Metal Gear Solid 2. It's running on the new emulator called Ether SX2 and it really blows me away how well this emulator gets some of these games running on the emulator. Hear me out though, you will need to tweak your settings for each and every game to get it to run well and I have a video out about some of my settings so make sure to check that out later. And just like that we have reached the reason why I even got my Odin in the first place, the promise of being able to play Nintendo Gamecube on the go. I'm using the MMJR version and I've done some tweaks to my games, both on my own but also by following the community cheat on the Odin subreddit on Reddit. The emulation is doing absolutely fine and even if you won't be able to run every single game in full speed, it's definitely worth getting an Odin to play Gamecube as your main system. Nintendo 3DS is super hard to emulate on almost every device and you won't be able to play every single game here either, some won't even start. However, I'm very happy to be able to tell you that two of my favorite games for the 3DS, Majora's Mask 3D and Ocarina of Time 3D, works almost flawless after some tweaking. I actually have a few videos up on how to get these games running as smooth as possible, so go check them out later if you want to. The biggest surprise for me when I started emulator tests on the Odin was definitely the performance of some of my favorite Wii games. The biggest drawback here isn't even the performance but the fact that you have to map physical controls for all types of motion sensitive controls from the Wii. But once you get that done you basically have a portable Wii. Now some of the games will have big issues and you won't be able to play all your Wii library 
but just to be able to play some of the most popular Wii games is of course a great success. And now to something totally different than emulation. What if I told you that you can play Half-Life 2 as well as Episode 1 and 2 on the Odin? And no, I'm not talking about remote play, it's right there on your Odin. How extremely cool is that? I have full guides up on my channel on how to set up and play these games. Yes, Half-Life 2 is almost 10 years old, but that doesn't stop it from being one of the best games ever made, and it definitely still holds up until this day. The Odin Pro is hands down the best gaming handheld that I've tested so far. I'd like to think that the team at AYN has set a new standard for handheld gaming consoles and I really think that other companies are gonna have to adapt to the fact that the Odin exists before they plan on releasing another handheld device in the future. You can still, as of the time that I'm making this video, go and back the project on Indiegogo to get your own Odin at a slightly reduced price, but you will have to wait at least a few months before you get your device. You can also just wait until AYN drops the Odin in retail store but at a higher price. If you're into retro gaming and want an almost perfect device, this is what you want. Now, you can of course go get a phone with a faster CPU and strap it to a controller like the Razer Kishi, but trust me, that won't give you the same overall feeling as the Odin will. And that's it for my review of the AYN Odin Pro. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did, please let me know by dropping a like or a comment. I'm truly overwhelmed by the responses I get on my content and I'm so happy that you want to watch it. I have made a lot of Odin videos in the past weeks so go check them out and consider subscribing to my channel if you want more content like that. I have finally also got a mail from Valve that my Steam Deck is on its way so I'm really looking forward to trying out emulation on that as well. That's it, thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.